Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this today, this video is going to be an interview with uh, Carl Miller. Carl has been a student of mine for I think three years now, and uh, he's also an expert when it comes to meditation. And he's going to start teaching meditation for the realm of the serpent in a, in a new program that's going to be announced soon. And I wanted to introduce him because he's got a very interesting background. And we're just going to talk about <clears throat> how he sees uh, meditation fits into his magical practice and why it's so important. So, Carl, welcome to this to this interview. What's up? How's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I've heard this from not only you, but many other uh, people who are into either spirituality or some kind of a call practice that if they were to drop everything they know, the one thing they would keep would be meditation. And yeah. through my own experience, I found that obviously that's the key to pretty much everything, stepping outside of, um, you know, our egos, the, uh, the bundles and bundles of information that we think we are, you know, and that gets in the way of, um, actually making things happen and making shifts and changes in people's lives so um for me you know meditation was something i never grew up doing or anything really um like that it came a, a lot later you know um in my life um you know i had a pretty crazy uh i had a good upbringing but i was a little crazy you know and so i went through a lot of things and um coming out of that after having a lot of different kinds of experiences I couldn't explain over the period, uh, quite a few years of my life, um, I started searching for answers that were not available in, um, you know, Western mindsets, right, or institutions, you know, um, I wasn't getting answers. So, because I was looking outward, right, you know, <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, through uh, many different situations, I ended up um, first looking into you know like basic yoga um things for my health um just for physical um health and stress relief you know qigong yoga and things like that and with that you know comes different kinds of techniques for meditation and things like that um once i started following you and when i was even before that when i was just uh, interested in um you know things out of the ordinary occult and things like that i had a fascination with it you know I started to understand that um, um, you know, I don't remember the name of the book, but it was a one of whatever it was a book I read um, on like magical practices. And the first uh, thing they talked about was meditation. You have to learn meditation. And then the guy who did it said the same thing that you and everybody else who's got any experience will say that, you know. Um, and what's interesting is after you know, um, practicing for a while, uh, I was listening to somebody and they were saying that meditation is not actually a, like a thing you do. It's a state that you're in. And so that kind of, um, you know, like there's, a, there's many different techniques to become meditative or silent, you know, and, um, and I believe like, like those are the things that we're trying to teach here is, is how to, you know, basically, uh, you know, you see the yogis, they just sit there, you know, they sit there and that's it. Everything shuts down and then they, they get access to whatever they want. Uh, and the main thing that I'm starting to learn or, and I'm always learning is that um, all these techniques I've learned and, and that I'm currently learning and doing, um, they all kind of get you to the same point where you can just sit there with nothing going on, like absolute stillness. And, um, and I think that's one of the most powerful places to be because once you're completely still, uh, you, you you know you have access to the universe. You have access to uh, whatever you want because you can see clearly. And so mm -hmm. that's you know, I just want to share that with whoever I can. Yeah, that's beautiful. So uh, I mean, obviously you're a magician too. And uh, what is your philosophy in that whole thing? And once again, how does how does meditation fit into this? And how do you how do you think you can help others with uh, with what you know about meditation? mainly just the experience, you know, I've done a lot of reading and all that kind of stuff, but my experiences with my meditations 
and combining that with uh, my magical practice is what gives me the confidence to know I can, uh, and, and I've worked with people one-on-one -on -one before, I know I can uh, change their reality within a few minutes. If I, can, if I can get them to allow themselves to get into a certain state, just a little bit receptive at that point, uh, you know, as you know, people can, their lives can change instantly, you know, just seeing something, just stepping aside and seeing something just from a different angle. Next thing you know, they're, you know, everything either falls apart for them, which is probably a great thing or whatever, you know. Well, I've observed you uh, for some time now and uh, you seem to be very receptive and these these teachings and, and everything spiritual seems to, seems to be absorbed by you very fast. So why do you think um, it is so easy for you to integrate that stuff and then use it in your magical practice where uh, others have, have a lot of, or seem to have a lot of problems doing that? Why do you think it works easier for you? Um, probably a few reasons, but I, I would say mainly and in the beginning, it wasn't, to be honest, it was, it was really hard for me because um, I've never, I'm, um, without going into too many things, I'm, I, I'm more of like a fire sign or an Ayurveda, they call it a pitta, which is um, more of an intense person who can tend to be on the, on the more masculine end of things, which is not as receptive, right? So I had to, I had to I had to really do some work on myself to uh, you could say become vulnerable because I think becoming vulnerable learning to become vulnerable with myself was a it was a, a important way for me to learn to be receptive to other information or information that's always there that my own you know rigidity wouldn't let through so it it, it for me. Uh, a combination of time, uh, finding finding out which technique works for me, which techniques work for me the best, because I found out that with me and just like other people, you know, like, and I know there's some basic techniques that work for everybody because they're working on certain things, but then there's other, you'd almost like say philosophies, like different styles of like yoga, and, and meditation that are good for one person and might not be uh, as receptive to somebody else, but in the end, we're going for the same purpose. Um, so I just found out that I found what worked for me with my, te with my temperament and with my personality at that point. Um, now, you know, it, it seems like the farther you go, the, the, the looser you are, you can pretty much do almost anything and, and, and kind of get with it, you know. Um, but it, it's taken me some time and I would just say consistent practice, staying, obsessed with this stuff you know what i mean uh, once you've had a taste of a little bit of detachment from your brain it's like a drug you know because it's you don't realize how much uh clarity and and, and peace you can have when you set your thoughts and all that garbage aside for even two minutes you know and then i started getting a taste of that with the meditations and then also doing trying to you know balance my lifestyle with with a diet um to a certain point and uh, some other tried and true techniques from yoga and things like that that just help get your system ready for meditation. And um, and the yeah. main thing is just keep uh, you know keep keep doing it. You know, even when you're frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Also, what I want to add is that um, you know Carl is also quite knowledgeable about Ayurveda and other like uh, other uh, you know diets and 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 um, and energy work stuff. You know, I think you do, you practice Reiki too, right? Um, <clears throat> but the point is, um, I mean, you, meditation must be a very strong part of your, of your magical practice, right? And um, like meditation is not just the clearing of the mind, right? It's also a tool that allows you to bring any energy into yourself. It allows you to to, to go into resonance with what it is that you want to manifest, right? So <clears throat> how do you see that as a tool to take control over your life uh, on a daily basis? Well, like you said, it, uh, it gives you a certain uh, clarity and perception and really 
you know, when you have the right perception, there are no, a lot of rules that you thought were there aren't there anymore. Um, and, and depending on one's level of perception and receptivity that dictates how much mastery they're gonna have over their own inner world, which in turn obviously is gonna be their situations that they're involved in. So um, it's, a, it's a great tool, man. I mean, I think every, you know, it, it's a great way to start the day because, you know, you get up, you're coming out of a, a in a way, a meditative state, uh, depending on how you sleep. And, um, but then a lot of people, you know, depending on their lifestyle, wake up disorganized, right? Maybe they're not sleeping in the right direction. Maybe they ate a bunch of food before they sleep or they watch TV before they, so whatever. So getting up in the morning, um, I'm sure everybody can, can agree and, and getting and doing some kind of a meditation where you're, where you're, whether it's charging your, your system up in a certain way, and then somehow being able to detach from the analytical mind before your day starts will give you, you'll be able to see all your compartments in your psychology, what needs to be done about them, what's working and what's not before your day begins. So you're kind of going out like prepped for, depending on how you look at life, you could say prep for war or prep for love or whatever you want to do, whatever, you know, everybody's a little different, but I would say you're prepped, you know, you're prepping yourself and, um, it's, it's, um, it's mandatory if you ask me to do any kind of, um, any kind of occult work, you know, um, yeah. where you're actually doing something. <laughs> yeah. And I get a lot of people, um, contacted me or, or wanting to learn magic. And then I ask them, do they meditate? That's the first question that I ask, <clears throat> because I, I honestly believe that it is not humanly possible to practice magic without a meditative practice as a prerequisite because it trains your mind in the way they just described, right? But I think people really miss how important that is. Like if you wanna, and this is for everybody who's gonna watch this later, if you wanna have a magical practice, you have to meditate. Without meditation, you don't have a magical practice, okay? Because it takes training and it takes the ability to steal your mind in order to tap into your true power. Meditation is, it, to a lot of people, it seems like a waste of time almost, but that's really ignorant to say because you gain so much more time back. See, when you take your uh, attention from the outside world into, into an inner world, you can actually process what's going on. You are, you're, you're stimulated throughout the entire day, and meditation allows you to process things at a completely different level, and you will have insights that you will not have outside of this meditative state. So I can't stress enough how valuable that med meditation itself is. And what's even more important is to be guided and, 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 and taught how to meditate. That's even more important. Now, of course, you're going to have to do it on your own as well. But it is extremely valuable to have somebody that can guide you through that once a week. I think this is how we're going to do it in that frequency once a week. Uh, meditation classes where people can uh, go through a, a med meditation class and a specific training with you, right? So if you can, please outline what a meditation class with you would look like. Well, I would probably start off because most people, uh, you know, I would assume we're probably going to do this class at, in the evening, you know, because um, most people are going to be around to actually sit down and have the time. So people are home from work, they've, they've eaten. I would always uh recommend to anybody and I, maybe it's not possible but my rec my high recommendation is before you do any meditation or, or kind of magical practice keep an empty stomach for at least two hours um uh, if you can do more than two hours then you'll really see the benefits of that you might automatically already be meditative by the time the class starts but uh, I can't stress enough from my own experience how much after doing fasting and things like that um, an empty stomach can really, because it's a second brain, essentially, you, you, you can really, um, it allows uh, everything to go where it needs to go, it allows uh, things to happen that normally don't happen when your stomach's processing food. Anyways, uh, besides that, I would say we'd start the class with some kind of, um, I have a few different techniques that, that, that I can, uh, we'll find out what works best for everybody, but uh, essentially they're a, a warm up kind of Qigong exercises, very simple, unless you're in a wheelchair, you can do most of them. Um, and what's that's going to do, it's, it's going to activate, um, energy nodes throughout your body so that your um, so that the prana is flowing a little looser than it normally would. 
It's going to help relax your system a little bit. It's going to help activate energy generally. Um, we'll sit and do uh, some pranayama, probably um, uh, alternate nostril breathing, or they call it Nadi Shuddhi. It's just going to balance the um, male and female energies in your body and, and it cleanses them at the same time. So that's also going to center the mind. So you're not on one side or the other. You kind of have a centered view on things. And then depending on how everybody is, I'll have to feel every, you know, feel the class out. I would say that we'll probably do a guided relaxation method. Um, you know, there's a few different ways to do it, but essentially starting from one part of the body, going all the way up to the uh, other side of the body, you know, uh, doing a certain breathing pattern and tensing and releasing the muscles to get people very relaxed. And after that, um, we'll go into whatever meditation we decide to do. Um, there's so many <laughs> to choose from. There's so many, there's literally thousands upon thousands of techniques from every culture. Um, I don't know every one, but I know quite a few and I'm always learning new ones. Um, like I said, I'm obsessed with this stuff. So everything that I learn, uh, and I won't teach anything that I haven't done myself. So um, I will only teach what I've actually done and experienced because I believe that's the only thing you can teach is your experience. Um, but um, I was, like I said, I've been a student of Frank. So I, I, I was in the meditation class he was doing for uh, quite a few years while he was doing that. So I've learned a lot of cool techniques from there um, and on my own and from other people and friends, you know, uh, as you get into this kind of lifestyle, you, you just naturally run into more, you know, sorcerers and shamans and people in your day-to-day -day life and become friends. And you're always picking up new information and news new skills, essentially just tricks that are people, you know what I mean? So it's pretty cool how all that works out. And I just, I'm like a sponge. I'm trying to keep it all in and, and, and pass it on. Um, I'm really into um, the, uh, certain yogic techniques and breathing that you can use with visualizations and meditations, which can really amp up uh, your energies. Um, so, um, you know, and the main thing is um, I want people to relax and have fun because when people are having fun, uh, they're way more open to be able to do things. They're not rigid. You know, rigidity is the is the is the thing that's going to block most people from opening up their perception to be able to uh, see things and experience things that normally they would. I know that because I, uh, I, 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 I there's times when I still fight that, depending on how hectic I let my life get. But um, lately, I've learned to you know just letting go, and 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 then after that just kind of go wherever is needed. Um, but uh, essentially that's what it would be. We would do, you know, the first half of the class, like I said, is essentially warm ups. Um, and then the second half of the class, I'd like to do a meditation that would maybe last at least 30 to 45 minutes, uh, enough for people to sit and actually have an experience, you know, cause a lot of people, they still might be internally fighting for a little while until things start loosening up. That's just, I understand how that works. So, um, and I don't expect everybody to get it right away, but you never know. You know, I'm a firm believer <clears throat> that what people are looking are looking for deep down is, I mean, yes, they're, they're looking for magic, but, but what does that really mean? I believe that people are trying to live a life that actually feel like an adventure, right? And at the end of the day, the only adventure that really exists is the adventure of our experience, right? So this very moment, you can experience in multiple in an infinite number of ways. You can experience it as a drag, you can experience it as uh, exciting, you can experience it as an, uh, a, you know, like a, like a magical journey of self-discovery. And when you explore the inner universe, the, the outer universe gets greater and more interesting as well, right? So I believe that that meditation is the tool to hit that frequency. Frequency in a sense where, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. The, 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 the adventure that people are looking for is right here. It's inside of you. The spirit world is going to be contact by going within, right? So I really believe that meditation is the tool and the gateway to all of that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? And more than, more than that, what are your experiences with that? Because you said that a couple of years ago, you weren't on that path yet, right? But how has that changed your life getting into it? And how has your experience of life changed? Uh, many, many new levels of, of freedom. And mm -hmm. it's, inter it's interesting how 
and it and it changes every day you know there's always new i don't think it ever ends but um just just new levels of freedom because you know it's like okay um like if i took a student's uh we'll say one week we do we focus we focus on just the root chakra on a certain meditation which is going to activate it which is going to energize it which is going to clear it which is going to allow them to really focus on what that really means that frequency in their life that dimension of their life and then once because a lot of people they don't take the time to really put focus on something for a while and, and really become something with it i know you've talked about that with uh, packs and things like that uh, when people are uh, some kind of a dedication so i think like uh, using it as a tool to really focus on one aspect of your life and truly understand it to the best that you can is going to give them absolute freedom or a greater amount of freedom over that aspect of their life everything that that represents and once they have once they once they get a little bit more mastery and understanding on that aspect from their life naturally they're going to want to go to the next thing you know and then you bring them to the next one and then you know allow them to really you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, today, with the instant gratification that we have with TikTok and all this stuff, um, is they want to activate everything in one day. I'm not saying that's not possible. There's tantric techniques and things out there that can do that for you. But, you know, are <laughs> are you ready for what that's going to do to your life, too? You know, because I've, I've done some things like that. And, and um, when I wasn't ready, and it will cause chaos, absolute chaos in your life, unless you don't care that's cool you know um but yeah no it's i think just it, it for me it's interesting looking back on how my perception has changed and every time i access a new dimension in myself um how it permanently changes my perception on reality um you know it's not it's not a happy you know it's not a part-time thing it's it's, it's per, once you i feel like once you truly access it energetically you know you're there you get this new perception you know and then once you can sit there and you know view your own ego as a separate entity i mean what more what more freedom is that you know everything that you're worrying about all day is now over here about 10 feet away from you and you can set it aside while you're focusing on what's important and then you can choose to either delete all your ego garbage or you can use it as tools for your social situations you're in i mean I, I believe that's an awesome freedom to have it's like playing the computer game from a different angle you know and um that's and, the way i like to look at it yeah and uh i mean this is the grill of the serpent right and and the people watching this they're they're going to be interested how they can use all of this and what you just said for magic and uh i think the best way to describe using magic is that the, the the inner changes must come before the external changes so when we cast a spell we are changing our own individual universe and then the external universe will adjust but in order to do that we got to detach ourselves from ourselves right so we got to become almost like an observer right so I just want to stress that this is not possible without meditation, without a solid meditative practice. And that's why I, you know, I, I used to teach the unbound mind, but time-wise, I, I just don't have time for that anymore. So I stopped doing it for a couple of months, but, but I really see the necessity. It's probably the most important thing when it comes to, uh, to magic, you know, meditation. That's why I wanted to introduce this new program. And I'm a hundred percent, I'm a hundred percent sure uh, Carl has my complete backing and trust that he's going to do it very well. And uh, we're going to put a second part up very soon. Um, and uh, you're also uh, going to be updated on when the meditation teachings uh, are going to start and when this program is going to uh, is going to become part of the Grail of the Serpent uh, offerings. And um, yeah, I just want to. I just want to end it here. And do you have anything uh, left to say, Carl? Anything that you want to add? Um, no, you know, I'm just excited to do this for everybody. You know, uh, I hope everybody comes in and 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 meditates, man, because it's going to shoot you to the next level. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in anybody's mind who has the experience. Okay.
Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that you that you're willing to do it. Awesome. Okay. So I talk to you soon. Do well. Okay. Peace.